गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स हाउ आर यू ऑल तो इन दी प्रीवियस क्लास ओके फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स इंट्रोड्यूस माय सेल्फ माय नेम इज अक्षय अक्षय प्रताप सिंह सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द एआईईटी टेस्ट दैट ऑल इंडिया इनेबल टेस्ट दैट यू हैव गिवन येस्टरडे आई होप सो ऑन सैटरडे और संडे यू हैव गिवन तो वी विल गो स्टार्ट डिस्कसिंग दिस टेस्ट so i hope you have done well and you got your result so i have picked some important questions out of the test so let's try to solve it out we are not going to cover all the questions of the test but we will try to cover most of the questions of the test so let's start our session our discussion so here is our first question okay some very basic questions are skipped in this session so what is first question you can see here there are three charges placed at a separation a you can see the diagram now i will draw this diagram again for you if you can see here like this one these are the three charges placed here one is minus q again there is a plus q and again there is a minus q charge and these three charges are placed at a separation of a inch this separation is a this is again a done now there is a perpendicular distance this is some point this is some point which is at a distance this distance is given as something r now we need to find the magnet find the electric field at this point now what's the situation what is principle of superposition it says if you want to calculate the electric field at this point try to calculate the electric field due to all the charges and then add them vector with the vector addition okay so i am just drawing this line now let's suppose this is point p it is given now field at p due to this minus q charge will be along this line everybody knows that then due to this minus q charge will also be along this line that i have drawn two things are let suppose this field is e1 this field is e2 clear this thing and due to this positive charge field will be in the vertically upward direction something like that let suppose it is e3 now what we need to do we need to find e1 e2 and e3 and then add them with the by considering vectors okay first of all if i write what is this separation this separation you will say this is root of r square plus a square by pythagoras theorem this is again root of r square plus a square that now what we will do we will write field now you can see that this is minus q this is minus q and the separation with the point p is same so these two fields e1 and e2 will be equal in magnitude not in direction i am saying i am saying in in magnitude these two fields will be equal and their magnitude will be ke k is the electrostatic constant 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not q is the charge divided by r square r is the separation square so if you square it it will become r square plus a square root will be cancelled out this is electric field e1 and e2 that now e3 will be what e3 will be what that is ke q by r square i think these two things are clear to you now we need to add them okay now listen to me very carefully students these e1 and e2 are equal in magnitude so one thing that is very sure is that resultant of these two fields resultant of these e1 and e2 these two fields 
will divide the angle between them will equally divide the angle between them so let's suppose this is theta this is theta so these two angles will be 90 minus theta each these two angles will be 90 minus theta each so this e1 and e2 the resultant of e1 and e2 will be along this line and this is what e12 i have named it e1 and this is the resultant of e1 and e2 is it clear now if you can see this you can see one more thing here even the component of e1 along this line this angle will be 90 minus theta this angle will also be 90 minus theta i i have written it very small but i hope you can see that so if i draw it here again this is point p this is vector e1 this is vector e2 and this is the vertical line i have drawn this diagram again now this angle is and this angle is 90 minus theta each then the component if you see the component along this vertical of e1 is e1 cos 90 minus theta that is e1 sin theta and component of e2 will be e2 sin theta and their horizontal component will be something like that these horizontal components will cancel each other and vertical components will be e1 sin theta and e2 sin theta so what is net field of e12 is 2e1 sin theta if you place the value that will be 2 e1 is what ke q by r square plus a square into sin theta is what sin theta is perpendicular that is r over hypotenuse is r square plus a square root that means power 1 by 2 so e12 is equals to 2 ke qr divided by r square plus a square raised to the power 3 by ultimately question says r is greater than greater than a that means you can remove a square from this result and it will become ultimately e12 is equals to 2 ke q in the numerator there is r denominator it will become r cube so that is r square this is e12 in which direction in downward direction so net field will be what e net will be one field is in the upward direction e3 one is in the downward direction e12 so both will be subtracted so net field will be e12 minus e3 and it will be ke q by r square which is our option number if you see which is our option number b so which option is correct option b is correct for this question if you have any doubt, you can ask in the comment box. Okay, I think it's clear. We will move further for the next question. What we did, we used the principle of superposition and the addition of three vectors here is used. Moving further. Okay, this is again a very important question and very good question as well. Okay. What's given in the question? There is a ring. Okay, you can see the ring. This is the ring. And there is a charge Q placed along its axis at a distance something root 3R. And you want to calculate the what you want to calculate? The total flux passing through the ring. Okay. I hope everybody knows the concept of solid angle. Everybody knows the concept of 
solid angle. That's what I am considering here. Let's suppose, let's draw it again. This is something of a ring. As per the diagram, I can see this ring is placed in something YZ plane. Okay. This is the axis of the ring. And this is the charge Q. Okay. So field lines will be something everywhere. They must be going everywhere from this charge. And but what we need to do, we need to calculate the flux through this ring only. So I am taking the extreme lines that will pass through the ring. So these are the extreme lines that will pass through the ring. Okay. So can you imagine this is going to be a ring, going to be a cone. This is going to be a cone. And let's suppose this is the half angle of the cone theta. Clear. And there will be a solid angle as well. You know that a solid angle. This kind of solid angle will also be formed here because this is going to be a cone. In your lectures, you must have heard the relation between solid angle and plane angle. And that relation for cone, half angle of the cone is omega is equal to, this is omega is what solid angle is equal to 2 pi 1 minus cos theta. I am not directly using the formula of the flux with the ring. This is a direct formula. But what I am trying, I am trying to teach you how to solve these questions, how to use, how to implement the concept of solid angle. So first of all, try to remember this relation. This is very important relation. What is the relation between solid angle and plane angle? Done. Remember this theta is what? This is the half angle of the cone. Now again. Consider one more point that I think everybody knows here. Let's suppose this is a closed surface. This is a closed surface, a spherical surface. When I am saying closed surface, it is not mandatory sphere. It may be any surface. It may be any closed surface. Cylindrical body, randomly shaped closed surface, anything. For any point inside it, for any point inside it, solid angle is just 4 pi. Clear? Try to remember these things. I hope everybody knows these things as well. Solid angle for any closed surface at any point inside it is 4 pi. Now, next point I am saying, let's suppose if at this point charge is placed is Q. So, the flux will be what? You will say, sir, Q by epsilon, not using Gauss theorem. For this closed surface, flux will be what? Q by epsilon naught. Done. Till now, everything is clear. Now, what I am saying, I will say here, I will make a relation. That is very important. If solid angle is 4 pi at this point, from this point, solid angle is 4 pi and flux is what? Q by epsilon naught. Done. So if solid angle is omega, then flux is what? Q by 4 pi epsilon naught. This is just the toffee rule, unitary rule, whatever you say it. Q by 4 pi epsilon naught into omega. Do you know the value of flux? Do you know the value of omega? This is what solid angle. This is what flux. So flux is what? Q by 4 pi epsilon naught into omega and omega we know that it is 2 pi 1 minus cos theta. Now replace these values and can solve, simplify it. You will get 2 by pi and pi will be cancelled. 2 epsilon naught 1 minus cos theta. You can see that 2 and 4 will also be solved here. So this is what flux, this is the golden formula using concept of solid angle. Now you can place your values and you will get the answer. Now I am placing the values here. 
what value sir pi with the ring is q by 2 epsilon not 1 minus cos theta cos theta you can see is base over hypotenuse the radius is given as r this distance is given as root 3r so using pythagoras theorem it will be 2r clear now everybody knows the pythagoras theorem so this is 2r so base is root 3r hypotenuse is what 2r r and r will be cancelled and phi will be q by 2 epsilon naught 2 minus root 3 by 2. Which option is correct? You can see that q minus root uh, 2 minus root 3 is here. And this 2 will multiply here. So it will become 4. So option D is correct. So what are the two things you need to remember after solving this question? My aim is not just to solve the question. The aim is that you can solve other questions as well using the concept. So these two relations, this is the relation of solid angle with the cone, a half angle of the cone. And this is the relation for the flux. Using that relation, this is the flux. In advanced level, this formula is used many a times i think clear moving further okay there is again consider a uniformly charged hemispherical shell shown below indicate the direction okay at p1 and p2 we need to find the we need to indicate the direction of electric field clear very simple now here your imagination power is going to be used let's suppose this is the hemispherical ring don't go with the diagram uh, it may be very poor it's actually very poor i will delete it and draw it again let's suppose this is our hemispherical ring hemispherical shell which is uniformly charged given. This is point P1, which is at the center. Now, if this point is at the center, what you can do, we can divide this shell in two equal parts. Clear? Symmetry is on the both on, on both of the sides. Let's suppose due to this first region. The field is something in this direction. This is E1. And due to this region, field is in this direction. I have written the same magnitude there because this, there is a symmetry. You can see that. Due to the symmetry field, the magnitude of field will be same. Now, again, due to the symmetry, if you take the components, if you take the components, this E1 will have, or E will have two components. Something I will draw with this pen. One is along horizontal, one is along vertical. This one. And for E2, if you see, again, there will be two components. One is horizontal, one is vertical. Out of which you can see these horizontal components will get cancelled. Only vertical components remain and the net field is in the vertical direction. So at point P1, field is in the vertically upward direction. This is very simple situation. Now come to the second situation at something off center point. Here we need to discuss. You need to be very much focused to understand the situation. This is our hemispherical shell. Something like that. 
and this is something off center point done this is now at this point okay what you can see from the first situation there is a field e and there are some x and y components of the field now what i am saying let's assume let's assume that this shell at this point p2 has some field in the x direction and in the y direction simultaneously something like that i am not sure i am just taking the components and assuming this is the true condition i am assuming this is the condition this is the field because if field is inclined at some angle it will have both components x and y so i am taking x and y components of the shell now let's just imagine another shell uh something like that which is identical to the first one which is identical to the first one but placed upside down or whatever you say just opposite to that the first now again i am considering this point p2 at this point field will be again in the y direction ey because shell is identical so magnitude i am also taking identical and there is a horizontal component ex nothing wrong till now i have made two identical spherical shells or hemi spherical shells now if i combine these two cells and put together they will form a spherical shell complete shell they will form a complete shell and it will look something like that this is what it will look like it will be a complete shell and this is the point p2 if you see if i combine these two cell two cells then the net field if i see ey and ey will get cancelled and only horizontal component will be there that is 2x that is 2 times of ex this is the net field at this point which is inside the spherical shell but what we know that inside the spherical shell shell field is zero that means two times of ex must be zero that means field in the x direction is zero what does it conclude it conclude that in the first diagram that field that we have taken the component that we have taken ex is zero that means the field has only y component and if the field has only y component then at point p2 field is in the upward direction because only y it has only y component that means which option is correct here which option is correct here option c is correct here this is kind of tricky question but i hope everything is clear in this question i have taken a lot of time to solve this question i hope in in the 5 or 10 minutes i have explained this question and you got everything clear what i have used here e inside is zero for a for a shell done moving further okay this is the question again from electrostats okay read the question and you have read the question uh, in the examination as well we will start with the solution three charges q 2 q and 4 q are uniformly distributed in three dielectric solid spheres 1 2 and 3 Of radius r by two r and two r respectively. Then, if magnitude of electric field at p at a distance r is e one, e two, and e three respectively, then which is going to be more, which is going to be less? Okay, let's start. 
let's draw one of these pairs. After that, you will be able to understand what's happening here. So I am drawing first sphere. This is not a good idea. Okay. Let's draw first sphere. Very good. Looking good. It has some radius R by 2. Okay. And has a charge Q. We need to find the field at a distance R. That means field to be calculated at this point. Okay. I think everybody knows, everybody knows that field outside the shell or outside the sphere is, you know that can be calculated like treating the solid sphere as a point charge. So we can treat it as a point charge and the separation between these two points between the center and this is what R. It is given. So this is field E1. E1 is what? Ke. If I treat it as a point charge, this point charge will be situated at the center. And the field is we are going to calculate at the point P, which is at a distance R. So E is Ke Q by R square. Very good. Very easy. Now for second, E2 is what? E2 is what? Again, for E2, you can see that this is the sphere of radius R having charge 2Q and field is to be calculated at a distance R. That means this point is at the surface of the sphere. So at the surface of the sphere, this is again a very simple formula based question that is Ke charge is what 2Q divided by distance is what R. Distance is what R square. This is second field. Now for the third field, the radius is 2R. For the third sphere, radius is 2R. This is going to be the third sphere. Radius of the sphere is 2R. Charge is 4Q. And the point is at a distance R. That means point is inside the solid sphere. Point is inside the solid sphere. Now you can use Gauss theorem to find the field. This distance is R. Clear? Now you can use Gauss theorem. I think everybody knows how to use the Gauss theorem. So let's suppose at this point field is E3 or at this surface field is E3. So what I'm saying E3 into 4 pi R square. This is the flux. Then is equals to charge inside divided by epsilon naught. Now you need to calculate the charge inside. Q inside you need to calculate. I will calculate it here. Q inside is what? I think everybody knows that. Over Q. I think I should write it in little bit of detail. Charge is uniformly distributed. Na? That means rho into dV is what we used. This is the charge inside. Rho is what? Charge per unit volume. What is the charge on the sphere? It is 4Q. Volume of the sphere is 4 by 3 pi. And radius is what? 2R. If you cube it, it will become 8R cube. This is the value of rho. Done. Into the volume, the volume in which you are, your Gauss theorem is. Your Gauss, uh, Gaussian surface is. So this is our Gaussian surface. So we need to calculate the volume of this region. And the volume of this region is 4 by 3 pi r cube. 
फोर बाई थ्री पाई फोर बाई थ्री पाई विल बी कैंसिल्ड आर क्यूब एंड आर क्यूब विल बी कैंसिल्ड सो इट विल बिकम अल्टीमेटली यू कैन सी फोर एंड एट विल बी टू टाइम्स कैंसिल्ड सो इफ आई एम आई एम नॉट रॉन्ग दैट इज फोर क्यू बाई वॉट इज रिमेनिंग सिक्स और दैट इज टू क्यू बाई थ्री क्लियर If I am not wrong, the calculation is not wrong. Then it will be something four pi by three. Four pi by three will be cancelled. Total charge is four q four and four. You can check it. Okay, let me know if there is any calculation mistake. Now put the values. E three into four pi r square is equals to q inside is what two q by three. Two q by three. This is q inside divided by epsilon naught. Done. So e three is what? Two by four pi epsilon naught. This four pi I have transferred and mixed it with epsilon naught. Four pi epsilon naught. Two q is already there. Divided by three r square. Now you can write it in the previous term. That is k two q by three r square. All three fields are here. Now you need to compare which is more, which is less. So I can clearly see that e two is the strongest. I can clearly see that e two is the strongest of all. E two is the strongest of all. If I see, then E two is the strongest of all, which is option number C. Clear? And then it is E one. Then it is E three. Done. I think clear. Very simple question. Very basic fundamental question. But sometimes students, why I choose this question? Because sometimes students may feel like. what is this three spheres are there and something very big is going to happen how we can solve it just try to read the question and it will become easier and easier and easier simple gauss theorem application moving further this is the question from class 11th i can see here uh i will draw the diagram here again for the simplicity this is the horizontal surface this is one string this is some another string and there is one more block which is suspended using this one this is of 1 kg clear now this angle is given as 60 this angle is given as 30 done and this tension is something t1 it is given now we need to use we need to calculate the this t1 we need to calculate this tension t1 now look at that again if i see first of all if i try to draw the fvd kind of thing this is going to be 10 mg 10 let's suppose there is a tension t2 tension t2 and in this let's suppose tension is t3 this is the point now to calculate t1 what we can use first thing is that we can take the components of all the vectors all the tensions and we can solve it another is we can use the lamy's theorem i think everybody remembers the lamy's theorem so if i draw in lamy's theorem i think everybody knows na one force divided by the sin theta the angle opposite to that force you can you, you will remember that Let's take a horizontal line here. Everybody knows this angle will be sixty, this angle will be thirty, and this angle is going to be ninety degree. Clear. So using Lamy's theorem, or whatever the name of the theorem you know, what I can write. 
this tension T1 divided by the angle opposite to that. This is going to be the angle opposite to that T1. And this angle is what? 90 plus 60. Sine 90 plus 60 is equals to P2 divided by angle opposite to that. That is sine 90. Similarly, you can take it for T3 as well. But I am not going to use because it is not to be used here. Now this system, you can see that it is in equilibrium. So you can, from this situation, you can say that T2 is equals to 10. From this portion of the diagram, you can see that T2 is equals to 10. Sorry, but uh, technical issue ki wajah se, uh, due to the technical issue, the recording was stopped. The session with the class was stopped. So I'm recording it again. So I let's hope you understand that. Now, what we were in, we were discussing this question. And I think till now everything is clear. Now, if I say this P1 divided by sine 90 plus 60. This is what? Cos 60. I think everybody knows is equals to T2. Sine 90 is 1. Now, T1 is equals to T2 means 10 into cos 60 means 1 by 2. So, T1 is what? 5 Newton. This is our correct option, which is option number C. Using Lenny's theorem, we can easily calculate this question. Now, moving further for the next question. Okay, this is a very important question of SHM, you can say. Question says they, there is a horizontal platform with an object placed on it. Okay, executing SHM in the vertical direction. That means there is a horizontal platform. First of all, we need to draw this horizontal platform, something like that. This is a horizontal platform. And some object is placed on it like this. Okay. The amplitude is given something. Amplitude is denoted by A is given 4 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 meter. Done. What must be the period of oscillations? Question says what must be the period of oscillations so that the object is not detached from the platform. That means the question says this is moving vertical SHM kind of thing. This is moving something like that. So during the process, when it is going upward, the particle will remain attached to it. You can understand that. When it comes down, when this platform, something comes down, na, then there is a possibility that this block, this object may uh, separate from the uh, platform. So this is the situation. What must be the period of oscillation? Now again, if I say, if I write it, write this situation. The acceleration, if it is doing some SHM, then its acceleration is A omega square. You know that acceleration is what? A omega square. Everybody knows that this is the maximum acceleration. So the maximum acceleration should not exceed acceleration due to gravity. Because if it exceeds acceleration due to gravity, then while coming down, the ball, the particle have the acceleration G and the plank or the horizontal platform will have more acceleration than it will move with more speed in the downward direction and the particle will get separated from the platform. So what we need to do here, this A should be equals to G or A should be less than or equals to G. This is the most precise condition for particle not to separate. So the maximum situation I can take A is equals to G. So just G is equals to A and omega square. Now we need to calculate the time period. So this is A. Omega is what? 2 pi over T. And this is the square. I have placed the value of omega. G. 
now if i write it further g is equals to a into 4 pi square by t square so for t you can write t is equals to a by g root is it clear into 2 pi i have done nothing just transfer t square and taking square root so place the values if i place the values here t is equals to root of a is what 4 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 divided by g is what 10 into 2 into pi you can clearly see that this is if you take the under root it will become 2 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 into 2 pi again why i you can transfer this 10 to the it will become 10 to the power minus 4 if you take root it will become 2 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 done now t is equals to can you write it as 4 pi by 100 that is pi by 25 second which is our correct option uh, 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 pi by 25 which is option number b have you got it right during the examination in the examination i can see that most of the students are not able to start the question from where to start this is again j format question j means format question pi c if i read the question for you what it says the equation of a plane progressive wave is something like that very good this is the equation of progressive wave when it is reflected at a rigid support this by seeing this equation you can see that it is moving in the right direction t minus x y 2 you can see that this equation this wave is moving in the right direction its amplitude becomes 2 by 3 of the previous value its amplitude becomes 2 by 3 the equation of reflected wave now two things to be noted here when it is reflected it will start moving in the left direction so this minus will become positive one thing is this this minus will become positive i think everybody knows that if it is moving in right when it is moving in left the sign changes it becomes plus next thing is what when the reflection takes place at a rigid support at a rigid support then 180 degree phase change will take place i think everybody remembers from the class of shm or wave the 180 degree phase difference will take place okay so how we can write how we can summarize these things one thing is amplitude new amplitude is two by three times of previous amplitude and if you see that previous amplitude is nothing but 0 0.9 so it will become 2 by 3 of 0 0.9 that is 3 3 is a 9 that is 0 0.6 so that means we know the new amplitude so the new equation y dash will become 0 0.6 sine 4 pi t plus x by 2 this is what due to the reflection it is moving in the left direction plus there is a phase difference of pi and now you can see that if i close it something like that 180 plus theta this is minus sine theta so y dash will become 0 0.6 sine that is minus sine 4 pi t plus x by 2 why this is minus sine 180 plus theta which is option number again i think b option is correct okay moving further now there is a question from gravitation it's spherical cavity this is a question based on cavity okay question says the spherical cavity of radius r by 2 is made in a sphere of mass m okay first of all let's draw the sphere let's suppose this is the sphere this is the sphere and some spherical cavity is made which has some radius uh, r by 2 which has some radius r by 2 this is something like that
this is the center of the sphere now this is the cavity based problem this is the cavity based problem total mass of the sphere is m total mass of the sphere including this cavity portion whenever you see cavity problem it may come in center of mass gravitation and it may come in uh, rotational motion similarly it will come in uh, electrostatics magnetism everywhere the same situation may come every time the same concept is used like this portion is empty according to the question there is a cavity so now if i fill this portion like positive row and negative row simultaneously if i take there is a, some positive mass however there is no negative mass concept but you can take it for the simplification row is what mass density it is filled with some positive mass density and some negative mass density so if you consider it positive mass density then it becomes a complete sphere and if you consider it negative mass density then it again positive and negative it is empty space so by using this concept you can solve the acceleration due to gravity so acceleration at any point what what they have mentioned let they have mentioned this point as a is due to acceleration due to complete sphere minus acceleration due to gravity due to the cavity done now again i am repeating my my words if i fill it you are i think confused with this row and minus row so let's first of all solve the get the mass of this cavity try to get the mass of this cavity we are trying to get the mass of the cavity okay let's suppose its cavity mass is m dash let's suppose so m dash is what rho into dv rho is mass per unit volume that is m by 4 by 3 pi r cube this is the rho mass per unit volume into the volume that i need to take this is the this is small sphere that is 4 by 3 pi radius is r by 2 that means r cube by 8 4 by 3 pi 4 by 3 pi r cube and r cube so mass is m by 8 so mass is m by 8 so what i am saying let's take m dash mass in this cavity and let's take negative m dash mass in this cavity so overall mass in this cavity is again zero so this is a cavity this is a free space but when you take m dash as a positive mass then it becomes a complete sphere and when you take m dash mass it becomes a negative mass body so there are two bodies one is complete sphere one is negatively massed cavity one is negatively massed small sphere so due to these two cavities due to these two spheres i can solve acceleration at a is due to solid sphere minus due to cavity now due to solid sphere if i write it as this is a something like that this is complete solid sphere and you want to feel calculate the acceleration due to gravity at this point a so acceleration due to gravity is g m by r square g m by r square very good minus acceleration due to cavity now i am considering the cavity here this is the small sphere of radius what r by 2 mass is what m by 8 and this is the point a so if you write the acceleration due to this sphere then it will become g mass is m by 8 divided by sphere radius of the sphere is r by 2 that is r square by you can simplify it that is 4 to the 8 so gm by 2r square gm by r square that is gm by 2r square this is the cavity based question every time same concept is used you are in class 12th i think and you must have studied the electrostatics what kind of question in electrostatics may be asked they will ask this is very important question this is a solid sphere some cavity is cut inside the sphere this is the uniformly charged like uh, rho is the density 
and some portion is cut radius is given r r by 2 whatever may be it it may be it depends on the question and find the electric field at this point so what you will do let's suppose this is point p so field at p is what field due to complete sphere minus field due to cavity this is what you need to do this is what you need to do i think concept is clear to you done now moving further the temperature at which option which option is correct i didn't uh, mention which option is correct gm by 2 r square i think you can solve this is option number 2 moving further the question says the temperature at which the translational kinetic energy of a molecule is equal to the energy gained by an electron in accelerating through the potential electrons of one volt i have read it very quickly i hope that you have gone through the question you can pause the video and see the question read the question now first thing average translational kinetic energy of a molecule so this translational kinetic energy everybody must know this kinetic energy is p by 2 k p this k is nothing but boltzmann constant this k is nothing but boltzmann constant i think clear now 3 by 2 kt now another statement question says this kinetic energy is same as the is same as the electron in accelerating from rest through a potential difference of one volt now remember one thing whenever an electron is accelerated from rest by one volt potential this is a definition thing this is known as one electron volt energy so this complete energy that the underlined line it is one electron volt electron volt is a unit of energy unit of energy in the later chapters you will come to know about what is electron volt but the definition this is the definition that is mentioned here an electron the energy gained by an electron this is the definition of one electron volt i can solve this value as well but you need to remember this now this is one electron volt electron volt is nothing but unit of energy and this electron volt in joule if i write that will become 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joule so question says this kinetic energy is nothing but 1.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 19 joule now you just need to place the values here that is 3 by 2 k t is equals to 1.6 into 10 raised to power minus 19 k is the boltzmann constant and everybody knows its value this is something 1.38 10 to the power minus 23 3 by 2 t you need to calculate so just solve it and you will get the answer just place the values and you will get the answers moving further this is a very good question in the question let's draw it first there is a block one spring is there one more block is there and there is a force which is f is equals to 5 this is 3 kg this is 2 kg now there are various ways to solve it out the question what is what they are asking they are saying that after some 5 seconds oh sorry 10 seconds it was found that after 10 seconds the velocity of 3 kg block is 30 meter per second so the velocity of 2 kg block they are asking okay can you see one thing here there will be some spring forces on the spring i think you know one thing we can solve this question using concept of center of mass if this 2 kg block is moving this 3 kg block is also moving both the blocks are moving in the forward direction you can see from the diagram both the blocks are moving now that means their center of mass of this system somewhere there is a center of mass the center of mass will also be moving Every, everybody knows that now you can say that this is very general equation net external force is equals to mass into acceleration of center of mass everybody knows now what is the system 
I am taking block plus a spring as a system. If you are taking blocks and spring as a system, the net external force is equal to mass into acceleration of center of mass. What is F external? That is 5T is equal to mass. Total mass of the system, you can say 3 plus 2, that is 5. Very good. What is acceleration of center of mass? We don't know. We can write it as, can you write it as dV over dt? dV over dt, acceleration can be written as at velocity of what? Center of mass. Clear? This 5 and 5 will be cancelled. So you can see that dVCM is equal to Pdt. Now to get the velocity of center of mass, you can integrate this term. Time is 0 to t or you can say 0 to t naught. It is given as 0 to something 10 seconds. It is given as 0 to 10 seconds. Velocity, initially the system was at rest, that means 0. Let's suppose final velocity of the center of mass is become V. So if you integrate, it will become V is equals to 1 by 2 T square. T square. Limit is 0 to 10. So that means 100 by 2, that is 50. So velocity of center of mass is 50 meter per second. This is the velocity of center of mass when at 10 second time. Clear? Now again, if I say, if I say again, they are saying the velocity of 3 kg mass is 30 meter per second. This is moving with 30 meter per second. Let's suppose its velocity is V or something. Uh, let's suppose V1, let's suppose V1. Okay. So what you know that velocity of center of mass is equals to m1 v1, you know the formula now, m1 v1 plus m2 v2 divided by m1 plus m2. So velocity of center of mass is nothing but 50 is equals to first mass is 3 and its velocity is 30 plus second mass is 2 and its velocity is what we have assumed it. Let's take it v2 now so that situation remains clear. v2 divided by total mass is what? 5. Done, 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 done. So if you solve it for V2, uh, that is 250 is equals to 90 plus 2 V2. Uh, that is, that is, that is 160 by 2 is equals to V2. So V2 is equals to 80 meter per second. That is 80 meter per second. What is the velocity of the second block? This is 80 meter per second. Done. Easy. But you need to know how to solve these questions. Again, moving further. This is the question. I have chosen the question from each and every topic, I think. Or the exam has chosen the question, something like that. This is the question. Area of cross section is given something 10 to power minus 6 meter square. Length is increased by 0.1%. Let's suppose initial length is 100. Done. Then change in length is what? 0.1%. 0 0.1% 0 means 0 0.1. This is the change in length. The tension produced, tension produced in the wire, that means force is equal to 1000 Newton. Young modulus. Everybody knows that Y is equal to F L over A delta L. You can place the value and you can get F is what? 1000. Length is what? 100. Someone may, uh, may say something like that, uh, sir, length is not given as 100. You can, whenever there is a percent thing, you can choose any length. You can choose L as 10. You can choose L as 20. But what is easier for you, L is 100, then delta L is 0. But you don't need to calculate even a single term. A is 10 to power minus 6, delta L is 0. 0.1. I can see the powers. This is 3 and 2, 5 and 6, 11, and 1, 12. That is 10 to the power 12 Newton per meter square. In the exams, it is necessary to choose good question that is good for you, that is good to solve. Now, this is again, this is a good question. This is a good question, very good question. So what is given? 
according to the question there is a solid cylinder which is of infinite length i must say is given i have drawn it something like that this is of infinite length so i i can't draw the ends i have drawn it for the simplicity here okay it has some radius r so this distance is given as r done it has a spherical cavity of radius r by 2 this is the axis this is the axis of the cylindrical body with its center on the axis there is a spherical cavity let's draw the cavity here the radius of the cavity is r by 2 this is the spherical cavity done okay the magnitude of electric field at the point p which is at a distance 2r okay so this is point p here you need to calculate the electric field is given by some expression is given find the value of k okay so our aim is to calculate the electric field at this point p okay and the charge density of the sphere is given of the everything the cylindrical body is given as rho again this is a question of cavity so again very simple whenever cavity term is used what you will write field at p is equals to one is due to cylindrical body minus due to is spherical body and you are done field at p will be what again i am saying you will plate positive row here and minus row here if you plate pause if you place positive row charge here then it will become a complete infinite cylindrical body this is a different one body and another is negatively charged spherical body so due to these two you can use the principle of superposition this is nothing but principle of superposition i think done okay now let's suppose this is question number one so i will solve each first of all i will solve cylindrical field then i will solve spherical field done using gauss theorem you can solve it let's take at point p due to cylindrical body so i need to choose a gaussian surface let's suppose this is the gaussian surface that i have chosen what you need to do you need to answer why i have chosen this cylindrical shaped gaussian surface okay so this is the let's suppose the height of this gaussian surface is l so what you can write i am calculating the cylindrical field e into i am applying gauss theorem i am directly applying gauss theorem into this area of this surface is 2 pi r l this is flux because with these two surfaces top and bottom field flux will be zero is equals to charge inside the surface divided by epsilon naught is equals to charge inside divided by epsilon naught so e into 2 pi r l now you need to calculate the charge inside the gaussian surface this is the portion that it has covered okay so charge inside is equals to i am solving it here rho into dv rho is what this is the charge density which is given as rho dv is the volume of this portion this portion which is being included this white portion this portion you can say i will highlight it as something like that this portion the volume of this portion is pi r square and height of this portion is l height of this portion is l then so put the value rho into pi r square l divided by epsilon naught and one thing that is given here the distance from the axis is given i think this is at a distance 2r the total distance is what 2r from the axis so this radius is what 2r 
clear? So it will become 4 R here. Done. Now you can simplify these things. After simplifying, you can see L and L will be cancelled. R square the power will be cancelled. So E is what? This is what E due to cylindrical field is what? Pi and pi will also be cancelled. Rho R divided by divided by uh, we can write it there as well because there is no much space. E cylindrical is equals to rho R divided by 4 F silent naught. This is what E cylindrical. I think calculation of E cylindrical is clear to you. Done. Now for field due to the spherical portion. This is again Gauss theorem. You can use it. This is the spherical body. And uh, I will try to solve it in a separate portion like this. This is our spherical body. Try to imagine things. This is the axis of the cylindrical body. From the center, at what distance you need to calculate at a distance 2R. So you will choose a spherical Gaussian surface of radius 2R. And this radius is what? This radius is what? R by 2. This is the radius of the spherical body. A spherical portion. The cavity has a radius R by 2. And the Gaussian surface has a radius 2R. Now, I can write field due to spherical cavity into the area of the Gaussian surface is 4 pi and radius is what 2R that is 4 R square is equals to charge inside the Gaussian surface. This is the charge inside the Gaussian surface that is rho into dv. dv is what 4 by 3 pi radius is what r by 2 that is r cube by 8. You can ask me anything that where is the doubt. Okay. So you can simplify it. I can see that you can cancel out this r square and this power will be cancelled. This 4 pi will be cancelled. I think there is a divided by epsilon naught as well. Na? Rho, this is Q inside divided by epsilon naught. Epsilon naught is also there. Okay, okay, okay. So E due to spherical cavity is equals to rho R divided by 8 into 324 into 4. That is 96 epsilon naught. Both the fields are calculated. Now put these values in equation number 1. So if I put these value in equation 1 from equation 1 net field at P is equals to E cylindrical is rho R can you take epsilon not common? Yes, we can take. So it will become 1 by 4 minus 1 by 96. That is rho R by F silent naught. LCM will be 96. 24 minus 1, that is 23. So that is 23 rho R by 96 F silent naught. But according to the question, the field is given as 23 rho R divided by 16 K F silent naught. So this K will be what according to you? Our answer is 96 here. There is 16K. That means 16K is equals to 96. So K is what? 6. This is the correct answer. K is what? 6. What we have done, this is again a cavity problem. Little bit difficult, not very much difficult. If you know the basics of Gauss theorem, then you can easily solve it. Clear? Moving further. This question seems very much easy to a lot of you. Most of you may get to the wrong answer in this question, I bet. And you have 
I hope or I guarantee that most of you have done it wrong in the examination. Or if it come in the examination, you might commit some mistakes. Try to understand what I'm saying. There is a solid non-conducting sphere. There is a solid non-conducting sphere. Like this. Okay. Mark my word, this is non-conducting. So for a non-conducting sphere, the potential at the center, potential at the center, let's suppose this is point O, and they are saying, if the distance from the surface at which electrostatic potential is half of the potential at the let this point is P. This is the radius R, let this distance is X from the surface. So according to the question, the statement says, Potential at P is equals to 1 by 2 of potential at center. This is the condition. Now, for a non-conducting sphere, potential at the center is what? Potential at the center is what? 1 by 2. 3 by 2 Ke Q by R. This is the potential at the center. Due to the non-conducting sphere, potential at the center is 3 by 2 Ke Q by R. And potential at point P is what? Simply, Ke Q by, the distance from the center is R plus X. R plus X. Now, there is a condition. I think one more thing that everyone should remember here is this one. I am writing it here. Potential inside non-conducting sphere. This is the relation, this is the formula that everyone should remember. For example, this is a non-conducting sphere of radius R. And at a point inside it, suppose at this point, which is at a distance a small r from the center, you need to write the Potential. So this potential is nothing but K. Let's suppose it has a charge Q. Q by 2R 3 minus R square by R square. This is the potential inside the non-conducting solid sphere. Potential inside the non-conducting solid sphere. You must remember this relation. Okay, now coming to the other question, you can simply calculate it. KEQ and KEQ will be cancelled. It will become 4R. You can transfer 4R is equals to 3R plus 3X. I have transferred just nothing. So R is equals to 3X. X is equals to R by 3. So question says find X. What is this? This according to this uh, our situation. Okay, uh, the X I have taken wrong because X is given in the question. So this is my bad. I am not going to correct it now. You can understand the distance from the surface to this point is R by 3. And this distance is given as R by X. So X is what? 3. So X is what? 3. Clear? One last question I am taking here. The question says, this is again a very simple, not very simple, but you should remember the relations. You should know the relations. 105 calories of heat is required to raise the temperature of 3 mole of ideal gas at constant pressure. You know the relation heat required Q is equals to at constant pressure is N C P delta T. Done. This is at constant pressure. Equation number one. Constant pressure. Now, heat required at constant volume is what? N C V delta T. Now, in both these situations, you can see one thing. That range is delta T is 60 to 65. That is 5 degrees Celsius. Here, 30 to 35. That is again 5 degrees Celsius. That means delta T is same. Let's suppose this is equation number 2. Now, if I divide these two terms. 3 mole, 3 mole will be cancelled. Delta T, delta T will be cancelled. So, 
Q in constant pressure divided by Q in constant volume will become Cp by Cv. According to the question, Cp by Cv is given as 1.4. So constant pressure heat is 105 is equals to 1.4 times Cp by Cv is 1.4 times Qv. So you can calculate Qv is equals to 105 divided by 1.4. You can solve it zero. That is seven to ninety-eight seventy-five calories. That is seventy-five calories. So answer is seventy-five. Very easy. Now this is it. I have selected a lot of questions, a mix of questions, medium and tough questions. I think you got everything. If you have any doubt, you can anytime ask in the comment box. Till then, bye bye. I am ending the session here. Bye everyone.